Hello and welcome to the programme. This week we review the second round heats of the Euro off track at Shelburne Park. We pay tribute to more award winners and head to Thurlis for the final of the produce stake. We also catch up with members of a new Greyhound syndicate. But first we join in fortune at Harold's Cross for the final of the Boil Sports Corn Cool Callum. We're in Harold's Cross this evening for the final of the Corn Cucullin. It's worth 15,000 euros and it's sponsored by Boyle Sports Bookmakers. In what's a brilliant final, we have some added spice. Mega Delight, the hot favourite, has won her last 12 races in the trot. She's aiming to make it lucky 13. Let's go over to Michael. Trap 1, Dew Point, owned by Albert Feeney from Carlo, the son of Arigal Buddy and Raging Tornado. Fast breaker from the inside, likely to be right to the front early on. Will he stay there? In trap two we have Blue Boomer, owned by Keith Doherty and Alan Farrington from Dublin, trained by Paul Hennessy, a son of Smooth Rumble and Daly's Hardtrop, a real classic greyhound. Will he get that run early? He hasn't got it yet in the stake, well capable of doing it. Number three, Quiver's Beauty, owned by Gareth Trainer from Monaghan, a daughter of Mustang Jack and Nariba, rapidly improving stare, good second to making Murray last week and sure to be prominent right through here. Trap 4, Metric Tiger, owned by Larry Byrne from Enniscorthy, trained by Johnny Kavna, son of Smooth Rumble and Metric Melba. This is a tremendous stare. 7.50, probably a little bit too short. He'll be flying at the finish. Number 5, Mega Delight, bidding for her 13th successive victory. She's won her last 12, owned by Bob Martin, trained by Seamus Graham, daughter of Smooth Rumble and Knock Even Joy. Brilliant stare and the very deserving favourite. In trap six, last year's Marathon Greyhound of the Year in Making Merry, jointly owned by John Fitzgerald and Pauline Cochran, trained by Philly Goff, a son, or a daughter, I should say, of Tom's the Best and Tinra Princess. Semi-final winner, not back to her best yet, but well capable of coming back to it tonight. The final of the Boyle Sports Corn Cucullin. In trap one, Dew Point. In two, we have Blue Boomer. In three, Quiver's Beauty. Four, Metric Tiger, the favourite Mega Delight in five, and Making Merry in six, and they're away, and the favourite slowly into her stride. And it's Making Merry fast away on the outside, and Mega Delight is in the wars on the corner. It's number one, Dew Point now, leading into the back straight. From Making Merry in second, Mega Delight in third, coming past the stand. And here, Mega Delight goes in front, and there's trouble in behind with Making Merry and number one, Dew Point. Into the back straight, and Mega Delight has skipped clear. She's gone six, seven, eight lengths clear into the back straight, and racing on at this stage. Mega Delight from number one, Dew Point in second. Now number two gets up into third. That's Blue Boomer into second now, coming out the fifth bend. But it's Mega Delight out front. Blue Boomer is second. And well, Mega Delight is on her way to 13 in a row, winning the final of the Boyle Sports Conco Cullen. Number two, Blue Boomer is second and Metric Tiger is third in a time of 41.98. The result of the Boyle Sports Corn Cucullin, the winner number five, Mega Delight, second number two, Blue Boomer, and third number four, Metric Tiger, the time 41.98. Well, it was Lucky 13, and with the owner, Bob Morton, owner of Mega Delight, she's done 13 in a row. She's Absolutely a magnificent Absolutely fantastic, bitch. and we're looking forward to more. A trap rise, your heart must have been in your mouth just for a moment. Well, you know, she had it all to do, didn't she, coming from there? But then she picked up and she flew. They, they say and a burst of pace from the middle there was sensational. They, they, they say winning is a habit. It certainly is with this bitch. It's a fantastic habit. One she should keep. Absolutely. Where would she keep it? That's the plan. Well, you'll have to speak to the trainer because it's all down to shame as to where she goes next. But um, I'm sure her place is to continue this winning streak. She seems to never give up anyway. Uh, behind her in front, she's brilliant. You know, she looked in big trouble early on, but... Coming down into the fourth bend here, she was really flying, and she went right away then, so I can't ask her to do anymore. We spoke to Bob Martin, the owner, he said, where she goes next is your decision. Probably the Barry's tea. Uh, there's other things might be talked about too, but we won't talk about them just yet. Well, another man here with us, Daniel from Boyle Sports. We know you were hit hard. We were indeed. Um, started the competition, unfortunately we went five to two. Uh, very generous price. I wish I'd uh, known. Well, <laughs> we would have counted it. Yeah. Uh, we had a money forced her down to seven to four before the competition even started. But um, all the great dogs made it to the final. Like we'd led quite a few pound on Blue Boomer as well. I believe you got hit quite hard in Blue Boomer today. We did indeed. Um, with uh, the winner being so short, we decided to open a book without the favourite, and Blue Boomer was uh, quite heavily supported this morning as well. So we've been hit twice. 
Well, betting without would obviously work. Maybe next time you'll get your money. Well, I don't know. We, we, we're not going to cry about losing the money. We don't want to see a winning sequence coming to an end, and we're delighted for the owners. Syndication has become extremely popular, both in the horse and greyhound racing world. So it wasn't surprising when a group of staff members from the Curra race course decided to get together and buy their own greyhound. They became the No Refund Syndicate. It started off, we were out for dinner one night, about 12 of us, and we started laughing. We were going to buy this dog and what we were going to call the dog and what the syndicate name was going to be. So we said we laughed and joked for the night about it. And then we um, went back about two weeks later and we talked and worked and said, well, are we going to do this? Are we going to, who's going to go in this syndicate? And we all got together and said, right, OK, we'll put our money in, put money up front, and then we put in so much every week. And then, of course, there was the big selection what dog we were going to buy and where we were going to get it. So we asked our colleague, Peter Matthews, to come in and pick out a dog for us. So we gave him, said, pick out a few and we'll have a look at them. So, of course, he came up with three. We could have a bitch or two dogs to pick from. This is from some pals of his in Tralee. So, of course, Syndicate got together and we decided, yes, we'll have a vote. Went 50-50. Nobody knew what they were going to do, whether they wanted the bitch or the dog or whether it was a bigger dog. So we said, right, we'll send Peter off and he can pick the best of them. Well, I had bought a few dogs for a few of my colleagues and those dogs had won over 20 races between them. So, of course, the car race course heard of the success and wanted to join in. So they asked me would I buy a dog for them. I have a very good friend in Tralee, um, Liam Dowlin from Bally Mac Elegate. He calls all of his dogs Bally Mac. Uh, hence the name Bally Mac Dilemma. And uh, I phoned Liam to see if he had anything suitable and he gave me a choice of a couple of dogs and I went back to the syndicate and I said, look at the situation, is there three dogs available? And to cut a long story short, we decided to pick Bally Mac Dilemma. Uh, Pat Kelly, the trainer, produced him at Newbridge for his first run and he won by 12 lengths in the fastest time of the night, 29.35. And they're away, a very level start. Number six now going up well, decision made on the outside. Number two very slowly away, Rose the striker. Into the corner and it's number three on the inside. That's Bally Magdalena going on now and it's beginning to open up a gap here from number five, Benny's made. It's number three, Bally Magdalena stretching right away, opening up a huge advantage. Number five, Penny's mate in second place around the final bend. And number three, Barry McDilemma. He's not going to be caught here. Coming home, a very easy winner. Stretching further and further clear, crossing the line. We probably threw him in at the deep end on his next run. We put him in a stake here, a tri-distance stake. And he came up a very, against a very good bitch that night in Axel Grease, who won the race in 28.65. He got a bit of trouble at the bend, but I'd say on the night he just wasn't good enough. Bally Magdalene in second, I'll be back in third. Duffy's Hurricane in behind, but down the back. It's Axel Grease, gone way ahead now from Bally Magdalene in second. I'll be back coming up to challenge for second place, approaching the third bend. And it's out in front, Axel Creek with number one. I'll be back now, just taking over second place from Bally Magdalene, who checks at this spot. And out front, it's number three, Axel Grease coming home the easy winner from number one I'll be back with number six Duffy's Hurricane in third just ahead of Bally Mac Dilemma I think tonight he has a very good chance he's drawn well loves the rails and uh, I'm hoping for the best one of the 12 syndicate members is inspector of courses Barry Langan who was feeling the strain petrified if you want to really know <laughs> we're back here tonight uh, diehards uh, <laughs> naive but, but we, will, we, yeah, we, we hope to do the business tonight there was plenty of support in the market for Ballymac Dilemma as the clock ticked towards the start of the Peggy Kelly 525 stake. Jean Cretan was taking no chances and made sure she had her money placed before the off as all the members watched nervously from the stands. They're all in. The bell's about to go. In trap one, Ballymac Dilemma. Two, Pete's Flyer. Three, Burris Honcho. Four, Rumble Cruise. Five, Express Breeze. And six is Tom's Tattoo. Hair coming behind traps. And it's number two, that's Pete's Flower from number one, Bally Magdalena, going into the corner, two from one, one trying to poach up inside, but he can't get through, and he's knocked over in very big trouble. And it's number two, Pete's Flower, now being passed by number three. Burris. Tonight was a bit disappointing. Um, we came up hoping we'd, we'd win. Um, you win the first night and you win easy. You, you get to, to like it and think that it's very easy, but we know from coming here the last night and tonight that you need a bit of luck. If you haven't looked, you have to wait for the next night. So. It's a pity we lost the money. So, nothing new. In the racing game, we're well used to disappointments, and you just get up and go the next day, and the whole that's a whole lot different. So, hopefully, the dog's the same.
disappointed tonight, but we hopefully we'll get another run. We maybe go back to Newbridge or something. Keep it in the home country. We might have a bit of luck then, <laughs> seeing as we can't get any up here. And hopefully we go from strength to strength. They're away and the favourite slowly into her stride and it's making Mary fast away on the outside. And For you would-be Greyhound commentators out there, Greyhound View is running a competition. The winner will get to spend a night at the races with commentator Michael Fortune at Shelburne Park with the opportunity to commentate on a live Greyhound race. All you have to do is email us a short limerick on the reason why you would particularly like to become a Greyhound commentator. The email address is emeraldimage at aircom.net and the very best of luck. Join us in part two for the Euro Off-Track Heats, award winners and the final of the Produce Stake. The second round of the Euro Off-Track 600 was run at Shelburne Park on Saturday night with Late Late Show back in action trying to defend the title he won last year. In trap one, top general. In two is Simply Supreme. Three, Ballybock Kit. Four, Couch Trip. Five, Official Reward. And six, Haliska Vienna. Haliska the marginal favourite as the hair comes around the final band. Up behind the traps now for this first heat. In the Euro off track 600 is number four, Couch Trip takes a flyer from the trap four. Now number two, Simply Supreme going up strongly on the inside. But it's number four, Couch Trip on the corner from number two, Simply Supreme in second. Number six, Haliska Vienna in third and number one, Top General fourth. But down the back, it's Couch Trip, number four in front, being challenged by Simply Supreme on the inside. Haliska Vienna closing in third and now Simply Supreme takes it up on the third bend from Couch Trip. He's battling back again on the outside. In behind him, Haliska Vienna and then Top General putting in a run. But up the straight, it's Simply Vienna on the far side. Simply Supreme and number four Couch Trip coming back and Couch Trip gets up close home to win from Simply Supreme and Haliska Vienna. The time 33.08. Second heat and in trap one we have Manic Street. In two Ballantlair Jake. Three top price. In four Unbridled Joy. The favourite Upper Grange Pays runs from trap five and in six is Mount Taylor Walk. The hair coming around the bottom end. Up behind the traps ready for off. And they are away, and it's number five, Upper Grange Pay is fast away, leading up to the corner. Number three going up well, that's top price, and number six on the outside, Mount Taylor Walk. But Ballantlair Jake arrives with a rush and takes it up on the corner, and number five is badly balked. It's now number two, Ballantlair Jake, being challenged by Mount Taylor Walk, number six down the back. It's Ballantlair Jake by a length from Mount Taylor Walk. Number one, Manic Street back in third, onto the final bend, and now number six comes up to challenge. Mount Taylor Walk challenging on the inside of Ballantlair Jake, taking it up coming off the final bend, and it's Mount Taylor Walk coming to the line being followed now by number one Manic Street it's six one and two at the line number six Mount Taylor Walk winning it from Manic Street and Ballantlair Jake in a time of 33.21 the bell goes heat three in trap one Spa Hill Prince in two Lenny's friend three is late late show four moving customer five top of the best and six Vera's Rovi the crowd are shouting already. The favourites in three, Late Late Show, as the hare comes around behind the traps, ready for the off. And Late Late is out quite well. It's number two, Lenny's friend going up well. Late Late in the middle and top of the best on the outside. Into the opening corner, three of them in a line, two, three and five. It's number two in front, that's Lenny's friend. Late Late Show is second, top of the best is third. Number six, Vera's Rovi running well, and here comes moving customer with his big run. But Late Late Show takes it up before the third bend. Followed now by number five, top of the best. Number two is third, Lenny's friend. Off the final bend, and it's Late Late Show in front from top of the best. And here comes moving customer with his big run. It's Late Late Show in front, moving customer, finishing fast. So is top of the best. It's three, four and five on the line. Late Late Show wins it from number four moving customer and five top of the best. Heat four and in trap one we have Walking Sunday. Two, Word of God, the favorite. Three, Black Cat Jim. In four is Ockram's first. Trap five is vacant. Fast fit Paquita is a non-runner. And number six, Drumsna Manor. The hare now coming up behind the traps. Away they go, and it's number three, Black Cat Jim, fast away. But number four, Ockham's first, showing good pace on the outside. Number one, Walking Sunday, going up the inside. Very close into the bend. The favourite's in third, in trouble, but he survives it. Into the back straight. It's number one, Walking Sunday in front. 
being challenged now by number two and headed walking word of god suddenly goes clear it's word of god now from number four Ockham's first moving second ahead of black cat jim around the final bend now and it's word of god in front being challenged by Ockham's first and second word of god from Ockham's first turning for home it's word of god going on from Ockham's first word of god coming to the line it's word of god the winner from Ockham's first with very close for third between drums in the manor and black cat jim time 33 34. Well, late, late show is once again the fastest of the round, and he'll be back bidding for further glory in the semi-finals of the Euro Off-Track 600 next Saturday night at Shelburne. Her March 99 litter to Larkhill Joe earned Perry's Pusher the award of Brood Bitch of the Year. Her pups included Tiny's Bud and Droopy's Kewl. She's a daughter of Kilcannon Hero and Double Vill. Her owner, Tommy Davison from Newton Abbey in County Antrim, accepted the award. Best British trained greyhound in Ireland went to Tiny's Bud, daughter of Larkhill Joe and Perry's Pusher. She started her career in the north, where she was bought by Larry O'Rourke and trained by Nick Sava in England. But into the second last bend and Tiny's Bud is in front. Magical Guest is putting in a run but there's still three lengths in it. And Tiny's Bud is galloping on. This is going to be a very, very fast run as Tiny's Bud comes up the straight to win from number one Magical Guest in second. Fact file, the 1998 son of Torgil Tex and Lady Be Silent was awarded the Sprint Greyhound of the Year. He won the National Sprint at Valley Skane and the Egan Catering Open 350 at Shelburne Park. Plus, he was a semi-finalist in the PaddyPad.com derby. He's currently in England under the care of Patsy Byrne, being prepared for the forthcoming English derby. Owner Mick O'Connell and breeder Pordy O'Keefe accepted the award. But into the corner, it's fact file. Away and gone now from Sporting Hazard, who checks there. Number five in third, White Fort Lane. But off the bend, it's fact file out front. He's going on to win this one. White Fort Lane coming home strongly with Sporting Hazard. The Marathon Greyhound of the Year award went to Making Merry, leaving behind Hello Bud and Metric Tiger, who were in hot pursuit for this award. Daughter of Tom's the Best and Tinra Princess, Making Merry won her opening marathon in Waterford by six and a half lengths. She won 11 races out of 14 over six bend distance, eight of which were on the trot. She broke four track records between Harold's Cross, Waterford and Shelburne Park. Owners John Fitzgerald and Pauline Cochran, trainer Philip Goff and breeder Mary Cochran, were there to accept the award. Down the back straight in Last Penny Lady. She doesn't look to be holding the challenge of number four, Making Mary, and Making Mary glides through on the inside before the fifth corner. Away she'll go from here. In second spot, Last Penny Lady. Back in third, Raheen Treasure making a bit of ground, but around the final corner, and Making Mary really is running away from them here. She's really confirmed herself as the top stayer in Ireland. It's the big night of the year here in Thurles, the final of the produce stake sponsored by the Studog owners and Red Mills. What a night they've picked for it, absolute gale force conditions, but the locals have turned out in force. They've plenty to shout about. There are four Tipperary trained runners, Borna Dasher has a lot of hopes behind him. But Rebel Watcher's the favourite, he's 7-4 to four just before going to traps, runs from trap one, trained by Paul Hennessy, he looks the dog to beat. The dogs now on parade for the final of the 2002 Produce Stakes. In trap one wearing the red jacket is Rebel Watcher. This fellow trained by Paul Hennessy and owned by Barry Cullinane in Cork. He's the son of Lee Mount Watcher and Just Queenie, ideally drawn on the rails. He's the favourite. In two, we have the early pace give and go. This fellow trained by Francie Murray and owned by Kieran Lonergan in Castle Blaney. He's the son of Top Honcho and Chill Out Olive. In three, we have one of the real local challengers, Borna Pilot. This one owned and trained by Rory Dwan in County Tipperary. He's a son of Top Poncho and Borna Best. In four, another early pacer, Mustang Buster, trained by Steve Kavanagh and owned by Alison Coxon and Sean Burke in England. This a son of Frisbee Flashing and Dean View Pearl. In five, the wide-running Drew Bizagasy. He can fly to a corner. He's trained by Owen McKenna, owned by David Miles. And this is a son of Top Poncho and Drew Sherrill. The lineup completed by the second favourite, Borna Dasher, owned and trained by Rory Dwan in County Tipperary. He's a son of Top Honcho and Borna Best, and likely to go very close. Well, the bell has just gone for the 2002 Produce Stakes. The hot favourite, number one, Rebel Watcher. He's drawn in one. In two is Give and Go. In three, Borna Pilot. Four, Mustang Buster. Five, Droopy's Agassi. And six, Born a dasher. There's a huge crowd here in Thurles. Strong favourite, number one rebel watcher. They're coming around the final corner. The dog's all set. 
And away they go, and first it shows number five, Drew Bizakasi, and his outside Borna Dasher, the favourite, very slowly into stride, and tails the field. Around the corner, it's number five, Drew Bizakasi, but Borna Dasher strikes the front at the second corner. No, it's Drew Bizakasi, but here's Borna Dasher on the inside. Back in third, give and go, ring of a grace. The favourite starting to close, but he's a lot to do. Around the third corner, Drew Bizakasi on the outside, Borna Dasher on the inside. Further back, give and go, running a huge race. Around the final corner, here comes Give and Go and Borna Dasher, a rebel watcher at the line. Give and Go wins the Prodigy Stakes for 2002. What a race! Well, the winner of the 2002 Prodigy Stakes in a thrilling finish. Number two, Give and Go beat number six, Borna Dasher, and back in third, Drew Zagasi. The winning time, 29-19. Well, Kieran, a tremendous performance, a great night. Oh, fabulous, fabulous, Michael. Thanks very much. It was, it was 100 to 1 against going around the second bend. I thought we were done. He ran a fabulous greyhound, so he did. You really must have thought it was over. I thought you? it was over. I thought it was finished. Because he's normally out in front. Ran his first night, he's come from behind and did it, had, did it the right night. Even at the third bend, what were your thoughts? I saw his hoping and hoping. And then when the other two moved off the last bend, I said he'll do it now, so he did. Like, you know, I thought that. What's the history of this dog, Kieran? Where'd you get him? I bred it myself. I bred the, I bred the dam and I bred this. This is her first litter, my top honcho. So she broke her leg at 20 months. She was a very fast pitch. A, a nice start. A nice start, lovely start. So this is an amazing classic double for you because you were also you won the Oaks up the field this year. Uh, the, here, uh, they're, tell, they're saying here that I'm from Castle Blaney, I'm from Clonmel, and to win the Oaks and win the Project Stakes, what more could you ask for? And tip have the All Ireland, and we we'll do it again this year. <laughs> what are your, your? I know it's very early after the race, but what would your plans be for this dog? I have to, I leave it up to the genius, Francie Murray, who and the family. They have done a fantastic job with the dog, and whatever he says goes. After that, we haven't discussed it. But now, just the monster final, we have to go for the honour then, Michael. You have a party first as well. Yeah, well a couple, of, we'll have a few. Yeah. But I have to be back at work tomorrow, unfortunately. <laughs> well, <laughs> Castle Betty. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. Happy trip, a great night, Karen. Very well done. Thanks very much, Michael. Looking ahead now to the upcoming fixtures, and on Thursday at Enniscorthy, it's the Macaulay Chemist April Stake. It's also the first round of the Michael Mead 600 heats. Then on Friday at Harold's Cross, it's the first round of the Key Pack 2920 stake at Kilkenny, the first round of the Tom Mar Memorial stake, and also at Newbridge, the first round of the Friends of Newbridge 550. Then on Saturday at Shelburne Park, it's the semi finals of the Euro Off Track 600. Then at Cork, it's the Cashman Bookmakers Novice 700, and the first round of the Always Good stake, the Evening Echo stake, and the Martin Fortune Confined stake. Next week, we go behind the scenes to stud keepers Sean and Anne Burke, and we visit Shelburne Park for what promises to be an exciting semi-finals of the Euro Off-Track. For further information on Irish Greyhound racing, ownership and syndication, visit our website at www.igb.ie or email us at admin at igb.ie.